All right, Mark Pachetti here. And, you know, it's interesting in just the last few days before doing putting this slide deck together and putting this presentation together for part one of my avatorial series, a lot of copywriters and a few business owners that I've been talking with have mentioned how deficient avatorial copywriters and training, specifically copywriters saying, where's the training and one company. And it, there's some out there. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mentioned uh, Craig Dave. Uh, he has a, a very comprehensive course. Um, he and I have different philosophies. So it's always good to get lots of different philosophies, but also really understand what's going on underneath the hood. And the Untemplate VSL, I'm giving you the tool belt to know what you're doing and why. You have all these interchangeable puzzle pieces that can fit together. Mechanism, new cause, storytelling, three things, FOMO, confession. Um, there's so many things that we can do, combine in order to <clears throat> connect with people. And that's a really one of the big philosophical differences between what I teach and what other top gurus teach, which is to persuade and manipulate when you connect with people, they persuade themselves. And we do that by hitting the peak of the story they're telling about the problem we can help them solve. solve. Now, in the avatorial sense, I, I was one of the things I was thinking about, damn, you know, over the years, I have produced so much money with these things and could have produced a lot more if more of my partners or clients were savvy about them and knew how to use them so that writing them made sense, putting them into production made sense. Um, and right now, because of market sophistication, because of compliance, because of what works and what worked then in the old avatorial days, and we're going to get into this, it, it, it was a journalistic breaking news flair in, in the newspaper, in a magazine. And it gave people information that felt like they were reading real news. It was an advertisement, but it looked native. With the avatorials, <clears throat> we have the ability to disseminate information for people to digest in so many different ways, so many different tones, voices, angles, positioning. And we forget, you know, also today we're going through the basic avatorial, but there's long form avatorials or what I call sales avatorials that can completely make the sale. And all you're doing, you could even let them do it on that page, go to the cart, go straight the cart or put them on a simple e-com page. And that's one of the big differences is this is adopting more of the e-com universe than just direct response this is infusing direct response and even commercial advertising into the e-com space because right now the e-com model lots and lots and lots and lots of things are being sold and lots and lots and lots of money is being moved so being able to leverage these different models and combine them in order to create the ultimate hybrid <clears throat> which is what we're going to be talking about in the well, let's play it. The avatorial enigma, you know, why avatorials? So today we're going to start simple, but uh, we're going to get into some interesting things that are going to open up your mind. And I'm going to show you some examples. And then we're actually going to be doing a little bit of live writing so you can see what it is, how easy it is to put these simple ones together. And we're going to be doing that for a sunscreen that I helped develop. And it's amazing. It's beyond sunscreen. So why avatorial scalability? If you have an ad, the e-com page or an ad to VSL even or TSL that's doing ad the webinar that's doing really well, then you can turn the ROAS dial up by getting deeper pre-qualification. And this is also about meeting different people at different points in market sophistication, which we're also going to talk about adopters and all that stuff a little bit later. But being able to meet people and pre-qualify them so that when they get onto the money page, the pre-sale page, the page where they go, press go to cart and put in their payment information, we're already, we're, this is foreplay. 
And there's so many different ways to have foreplay. So many different positions, if you know what I mean. So this is the scalability piece. And in different markets, the avatorial and in different traffic platforms like, uh, um, oh, God, like uh, the Yahoo network, Taboola, you have to have an avatorial and and you can actually you should be it should be ad avatorial VSL TSL. Um, that's the winning model. But you can also succeed ad avatorial or sales vitorial, which will go over in uh, future parts of this avatorial free avatorial series to start off this uh, new untemplate copywriting YouTube channel. <clears throat> so turning the ROAS, so getting more conversions and getting better conversions on our upsells, better uptakes and longer lifetime value. There's so much value in avatorials and in also in different spaces like skincare, financial, they're essential. Um, you can absolutely use it in supplements. They're massively underused when they're used and positioned well. Um, one, and I've had so many successes with them in skincare supplements, not as much a financial copywriter, uh, choose not to be. I don't watch enough news, um, <clears throat> but it's the scalability factor. <clears throat> And being able to test lots of different avatorials. And it also gives your ads on the front facing side direction. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's kind of move on over there for a second. Start on the ad side. Let's say you're running on Facebook. Now, we all know with Facebook that they need new, fresh ad copy, video content whatever you're doing you need to add fresh ads every week fresh ad sets and lots of different headlines ad copy um so you know what being able to send people to an avatorial gives you the ability to write short facebook ads because you're getting them onto the avatorial page which is doing all of the pre-qualifying all of the heavy lifting rather than having to do it in the ad or figure out the balance between ad and income page. You know where you're doing the majority of heavy lifting. The econ page needs to confirm what they've learned in the avatorial, what they discovered in the avatorial. So it sets the tone, gets them in the mood for the foreplay, which <clears throat> I hope you know how important that is. Now, we're hitting the peak. So in the example of, of where dopamine, how do you get the peak of dopamine? You have to hit a peak of the story and telling about the problem you can help me solve. And it needs to have gravitas. It needs to have a feeling of breaking news that you are revealing something that hasn't been talked about by other companies. And that gives you an automatic new cause that you're going to explain what's really going on. And that's powerful. Just the concept of that alone is absolutely powerful. Now, in the case of this, what we're using, the sunscreen that I helped uh, develop, it is it contains ingredients that you would find in expensive moisturizers and serums and toners and masks, not a sunscreen. A mostly natural, 95 plus percent natural sunscreen. And who when you have all these toxic sunscreens on the marketplace and in fact in my research and, and and by the way who's better qualified than a copywriter to break news because when we know how to do the 80 percent better than everybody else then we are those old school 60 minutes or in the example i'm going to show you in a little while walter cronkite true journalism not talking heads not mouthpieces not somebody uh, expressing opinion in order to create diversity, not diversity, conflict, <laughs> which is what uh, uh, how news is news is typically used. We're going back to old school general journalism. But on the Facebook page, you can be trophy. You can and you'll be able to hit different market sophistication in your ad side. So when you get them on to the advertorial, you're you're hitting different market sophistication with different frame of mind, different simplicity, different deep dives into 
mechanism new cause things of that nature so when you hit the peak of the story i'm telling so for instance who's the bad guy it's the the, the sunscreen companies it's the ftc it's the why are they allowing these toxic chemicals to be on our skin well you're going to see in a minute that there's a lot of propaganda that says oh no they're nano they're they're perfectly nanometals they're perfectly fine on our skin don't worry about it and i'm going to show you the difference between and how to do your 80 percent so that you find you know in this case for the abaturial we're going after the bad guy which is zinc oxide that white stuff that everybody has on their face because i've already gone after oxybenzone and things like that in other abatorials so in this example um i'm gonna do something i haven't tried yet in this particular campaign or funnel so hitting the peak that when the zinc oxide is exposed to the sun it degrades to uv it degrades it's supposed to protect us from uv but it degrades and becomes toxic on our skin and i'm going to show you all that in a second so there's a lot of emotion in there a lot of good guy bad guy one of the most archetypal uh, elements puzzle pieces in the untemplate system so think walter Cronkite. i just talked about this you know that you're coming at it from an old school journalism standpoint that doesn't mean you're going to be boring and like you know a tone that was relevant in the 1960s is not going to necessarily be relevant today or isn't going to be relevant today. <clears throat> but he was somebody who asked questions, researched journalism. Same with the old school peeps on 60 Minutes. They would ask the hard questions, I think, as they put it back in the day, as that's what she said, because nobody else was. Nobody else did the deep dive 80% to have interviews that were so extremely provocative and so different from what we saw on the nightly news and CNN and Fox and, you know, MSNBC and all that type of stuff. So having that, but Walter Cronkite was able to have that credibility, his tone had credibility and he earned credibility because he did ask the right questions and he was able to put the news forth in ways and that's the way it is you know so billions of dollars have been made with these with the with the old school avatorial even back in the uh, newspaper magazine days so and billions of dollars have been made digitally with avatorials so if you've used them and you haven't had success there's a reason why and if you haven't used them Ooh, you're leaving money on the table. So just like with the untemplate VSL, you have, you know, I gave you a, a bunch of in the ebook, uh, a bunch of uh, puzzle pieces to play with and different tones, different uh, angles to look at writing your copy. Well, we talked about breaking news. Today, we're combining the, the breaking news feel with my story coming from a doctor perspective. No, we don't have all have access to doctors. All the this doctor was actually fairly easy to find on backstage and is going to be a nice little test. So don't uh, think that it's like, oh, my God, it's so hard to find or it's too expensive. It's not. Conspiracy. We're not temple. All, it, it's conspiracy isn't tin foil hats anymore some of it is but there's the conspiracy angle that triggers people's deep confirmation biases so that's a powerful little angle to use as is confession um breaking the fourth wall things of that nature the review uh, uh one of my uh right right with you clients is sending me one of his products and i'm actually going to do an unboxing and you know, talk about how it feels and then what it does over time. Uh, it's a health thing. And I'll actually do a little presentation about that because it's going to also be used in an advertorial um, branding. Um, you can come from the brand voice and make your brand a symbol for what you solve or satisfy so you can get more and more market share. And there's different market share broad and specific different verticals in the broader market you can just have the broader market we're going to talk about that as well i don't know if you can hear my dog in the background but excuse him so 
one of the things that the breaking news concept and the avatorial concept in general is peeling back the curtain. Uh, and this, I, I've told this story before, and it's relevant here. So if you heard it, forgive me. Um, this was during the uh, Democratic National Convention when Barack Obama was uh, uh, running for re-election. Bill Clinton was the speaker before him, the semi-man event, if you will. And he, the way he gave his speech, it really felt like, hey, hey guys, I'm going to show you what's going on back here. You know, it's, he just had this, this connection with the crowd and, and, and revealing things that triggered dopamine. Oh, I knew that confirmation biases. You had to be worried about that. Oh, I knew that. And the negative and confirmation, you know, he, he was able to just trigger dopamine, 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 and had the crowd engrossed. And I remember I was married at the time and that woman, uh, I asked her, what did you think? Cause she's like, I understand why people, my women want to suck his dick. That's all she said, but it was engrossing. And it really was because he was peeling back the curtain. So when you peel back the curtain, number one, you give your avatorial, your piece, a reason to exist. And when it's breaking news, you're immediately insinuating a reason to exist. Now, that's going to be determined if you can actually achieve that in your 80%. I'm going to show you a few things just what before I went to record here. Just a simple question I asked and what it revealed and how I can use that and make this simple, bing, bang, boom. Who's the blame? The good guy, a bad guy archetype. You know, it's, it's old as day, Batman and the Joker and um, Donald Trump and sanity. Uh, <laughs> make them believe again. Um, part of meeting each market where they are, especially the higher sophistication markets that have tried a lot of things, is introducing that concept of mechanism and new cause and and framing them in a story that breaks makes them raise their hand so they see themselves mere neurons. Oh, that's me. Well, yeah, that's you. That's why those things didn't work for me either. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, establish the unprecedented. The, the sunscreen is unprecedented. There's not another sunscreen on the market like it. So we're going to be able to protect your skin in multiple ways while also restarting collagen production, type 1 collagen production and elastin. Um, help protect the skin barrier, heal the skin barrier, repair, help repair the skin barrier. It does amazing things and you'll see a little bit more later. Um, so these are just some of the, if you um, imagine that treasure chest, the, you know, things that you have, all, as well as all the other elements and puzzle pieces in the untemplate ebook. If you haven't got it, please do. An embarrassment of riches, y'all. So in this case, the voice is going to be Dr. Carly, who did not formulate it and was not involved in formulating it. However, that is how I am positioning her being the one who did. So there is some wiggle room in that. I'm giving creative license on it, sue me. Not her. Uh, so the avatorial in this sense, you know, if we had done an interview style avatorial, it would have been interviewing Dr. Carly about this breaking news, about what she discovered about zinc oxide and how she solved the problem. Getting in, you know, so we have new cause, the reason why those things aren't working, the reason why everything on Amazon's top 10 sunscreens, most popular, top selling, all have toxic ingredients that shouldn't touch human skin. And then we're mixing the, the direct response, um, make the sale now, one thing, one thing, one problem, one solution meeting at a very specific part in a story or a broad part in a story to get them to that solution with the mechanism. Not the hook, because we all know positioning is the hook. At least if you follow me, you know that. <laughs> all right, transition. Here we go. Oh, what did I just say? Positioning is the hook. That's so funny. All right. So what people, what story are people telling about the problem you can help them solve? And what specific stories as you, so there's the broad story. 
um, I want to protect my skin. I don't want wrinkles. Um, the preventative, which is now relevant in skincare. If you're in skincare, please know that now. Um, as is the 50 plus baby boomer market. We love the boomers. They're dying out. Um, so you need to be learn how to be relevant, the, a reason to be relevant, a reason to exist, all that type of stuff. Um, uh, 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 by the way, another reason to exist could be your personal why. It could be <clears throat> the fact that this helps people more than anybody else. It could be uh, taking care of your family and prioritizing um, being somebody of character and demonstrating for your children and your family what it really means to help people. And that's why you created this solution. Whatever it is, whatever the background is, whatever made you come to this. Being able to tell a story, discovery story, is another way to connect with people and help them persuade themselves into your offer, into believing this mechanism and new cause and the studies and the hero elements alive. So what are you going to use? How are you going to connect with the story people are telling with mechanism and new cause? So all of these things have so much more impact, just like if you're watching a movie, the script comes alive with all the visual effects and the actors, you know, with their inflections and their body language and just the sets and everything that we love that engrosses us and draws us in. Same thing with the freaking avatarial, y'all. By the <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Mark for edit, Mark. Um, visuals. Uh, one of the things that I didn't cover in this that I actually think about it now should have covered uh, are the right pictures and the right visuals. However, I will kind of cover that in the mock-up that I made. Oh, uh, it's formulating the vision for the avatorial. No. Oh, so it's also knowing the uh, ecosystem. So remember the ad, what the ad's going to say, what the avatorial needs to say, what the money page is designed to convert. So if the money page needs a little bit more on there because the advertorial is short and it needs the, the, the econ page needs to have a deeper dive into the mechanism, new cause, what the ingredients are, what the new financial information is, what's in the supplement, whatever. Um, you have that wiggle room, but you need to know when you're writing the advertorial how it's going to fit in, therefore how it's going to be able to turn that ROAS dial in the totality of the funnel ecosystem. And you can have different pages, different variables. Everything needs to be congruent. Please get congruency, y'all. Speaking of congruency, this is the market sophistication, basic stuff. But a lot of copywriters and business owners aren't really thinking about this. So when you have a product that's been around for a long time or a market that's been around for a long time that's tried a lot of different things, you're you're right you're right here in terms of market sophistication where you want to position yourself so that you can get the early majority and the early adopters as they're coming up so you're at mid-level sophistication right and that's when you're trying to be broad everything to everybody you know a lot of e-com does that if you notice it's very broad but you're able to add the specificity in your ad and avatorial. So it really helps meet market sophistication where it's at. Late majority, late adopters, people who are late adopters, like, you know, your grandma who probably didn't start using a cell phone until 2008, right? Late adopters. Maybe she hasn't yet. <laughs> My mother never did. Um, so early adopters, um, are now high at the market sophistication because they they also you know they tried yours they tried other things um, late adopters low market sophistication you can hit them with trope your copy that worked ten years ago early adopters you need to hit them harder like skincare higher sophistication markets you need to hit mechanism new cause super hard because there are so many things they've already tried some that also did work and just didn't work but they're looking for what's new relevant now and that needs to be you so understanding who you're writing to and why or being breaking them up into different ad sets and either just ad sets or even uh the front end from uh the ad to the ecom page hitting different market sophistications you can test both Start out with a broad, probably that's easier.
So for today, we're doing just a short, showing just some short editorials, and I'm going to whip right through one. But every puzzle piece is a rabbit hole. You get to choose how deep you want to dive and how deep you really need to dive, how much 80% you need, how much back processing you need. For me personally, I've done so much of this. I need very little 80% to trigger that positioning that will hook people. And also understanding my product so well because I helped develop it, which is key. And knowing also that it helps better than everything else on the market is also very, very key because I get I give myself a lot of freedom to say what really needs to be said when I'm aware that it really works. I hope you have that opportunity many times in your career. So every puzzle piece can fit with every other puzzle piece. That's why you can create any picture you want. You can start with new cause. You can start with why uh, the FTC is the bad guy. Why, um, why is Amazon selling sunscreens that should never touch human skin, right? So the good guy, bad guy piece, the authority piece in this case, because we have a doctor, um, multi-mechanisms because we have so many incredible products. Um, there's so many things, so many rabbit holes I can go down and make these editorials super long. So I have to choose how I'm positioning each piece with the, each other piece so I know how much I need to say and what's going to get them down that slippery slope. And that last one, think of every puzzle piece as a character in your avatorial, in your VSLs, in your ads, however it is that you're using this treasure chest of, of elements and heuristic puzzle pieces and tones and angles and attitudes, energies. The more deliberate you are, the more you know what you're doing and why. Then you make a decision, make it right, and choosing how much to focus on. For me personally, that has a lot to do with listening to my gut. I can feel when I'm connected to the essence of the piece and when what I'm thinking about, feeling about, putting my attention on the 80% I'm asking, it's not off, do something else. And it's all about finding that slippery slope. So what's going to help me self-identify the most? Again, that's where we're going to start in the headline and get ourselves down that slippery slope. Um, so just a little bit of encapsulation here. Um, pre-qualifying people on the ad side so you don't need to do too much but you are pre-qualifying people on the avatorial not in the ad and not on the e-com page and that's why the avatorial is what's turning the conversion in ROAS style it's what's making upsells be taken to higher percentages because you're pre-qualifying people, which adds the emotional attachment to the solutions and to the acceleration, faster momentum to the front end with the upsells, which is how upsells need to be positioned and used. And you can see in this Sylvester Jennifer Stallone with their kids, their daughters, those were ingredients I had available when I wrote for serious skincare. And it worked. And the avatorials did a lot of the work. You know, once again, avatorials can meet people at different market sophistication so easily or help elevate market sophistication if it's low, if it's early adopters, and also meet late adopters, higher market sophistication, so that you create that equilibrium. And that could be with that breaking news combined with all these beautiful, tasty, delicious elements. Knowing where to send them, we already covered that. I won't reiterate. So any questions, please post them below. But we're not done. Now I'm actually going to X out here. And we are going to share my screen. So first, right here are two examples of utilizing short avatorials for any product, any offer to test messaging, to test positioning without going to the moon. 
So once again, on the ad side, we get to keep them short, maybe a little bit longer in this way. It doesn't have to be total clickbait, you know, not like one line, but mm, let's say up to 10, 15 lines. So decent little ad. Didn't talk about pictures. These are little mock-ups I make in Canva so that I can kind of give direction and storyboard the symbology. Remember, remember symbols, symbols trigger that automatic association. So if people are telling a story about a problem you can help them solve, what are the symbols that are going to create that automatic association? There's a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So agitating the problem, the bigger problem, the broad problem, meeting different market sophistication. So this would be lower and higher market sophistication. And it's going after confirmation bias. The deeper problem, the bad guy, the consequences. Then I show them what the average person goes when they go to Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and whatever drugstore. Here's what you're going to see. It's also true on Amazon, which I used in the VSL. And in this case, I'm going over actually uh, the bad guy, the main culprit here is oxybenzone. So I'm getting specific with uh, an ingredient that I know is in every single one of those sunscreens. And what it does, and it creates damage, and I have all the substantiation. Um, and then getting into introducing Dr. Carly, who is an incredible woman. Um, she really killed it in terms of actually being able to perform this stuff. So I was very happy about that. And it, it's going to create a lot of uh, uh, nimble testing. So introducing her and the fact that she is outdoors a lot. And that she is a skincare specialist and a wound, a, a, a board certified wound um, repair, I forget the word, specialist, uh, which is, you know, like if she, if she can heal scars, imagine what she could do for wrinkles. And that's what she said. No, that is actually what she said, something like that. So a little edification of her, but, you know, in the interview style. So it's not Dr. Carly speaking. It's not even a person that we even really need to introduce. That's why you don't need necessarily need to have a voice. And there's ways to accomplish this. Um, the interview style or uh, uh, unfolding of information style, um, utilizing different people, mediums. It could be an article. It could be um, uh, what uh, product reviews. It could be <coughs> what's the website everybody uses God, this is gonna freaking get reddit you know stories on reddit uh it could be the actual people that you interview for uh, uh people's customers their success stories or ugc direct response actors and getting their stories lots of way to get this style of copy down and just sending people over to the sunscreen itself and then talking about how it also fights against blue light exposure, like this digital screen. And very simple um, features and benefits. Mechanism driven, but still very much simple features and benefits. The second one, going more for the jugular, popular sunscreens, making people look old. And then starting with a quote from Dr. Carly. Did we do that up here? And again, another mock-up in Canva. So we have multiple symbology, emoji, the words themselves, and then the symbols of the popular sunscreen. So it creates that automatic association. Pictures are going to be a big part. I've had um, advertorials move the ROAS dial an extra one time with just changing out the pictures, not touching the copy or the rest of the design. So yes, pictures are important. Do not be lazy. I'll just use stock pictures here and here and here. It's good. Put some energy into it, y'all. Sunscreen is responsible. So the sun is responsible for 80, 90% of why we age. Um, that should be actually on one of these. I think it's in the VSO, which they're going to, which is why it's not in here. Uh, but just going to the e-com page, um, that can work. So uh, you'll see here. 
protecting the fibroblasts because losing collagen, elastin, 80% of our skin is type 1 collagen. Uh, we lose 50% of it by the time we're 60. Uh, so we're giving people valuable information. And one of the things that editorials fail to do is give people real information. If you're going to pre-qualify them and they're self-identified, then they need that deeper information. So that other slide that we how far down the rabbit hole do you go? Well, how far the rabbit hole do you need to go to provide people with this type of information? Talking about the eyes and past skincare data, the eyes are, you know, a big part of where we do genuinely look older. I certainly do. Um, trademarks of oxidative damage, meeting people at higher sophistication, uh, talking about the profits over the people. Um, and then the, the oxybenzone being the key culprit in the bad guy situation. So getting a little deeper into that and how it causes accelerated aging. Uh, wound care, wound repair specialist, uh, changing. So the breaking news, this changing the conversation, basic features and benefits, and then getting them to the econ page that has the mechanism, more new cause, and a deep dive into what's in each ingredient and what makes them so effective, which again is really cool. So let's go over here real fast. Um, I'm not going to do the whole thing here, but you'll get an idea of how easy it is to go down the slippery slope. If you need help writing these things, you can check out my Write With You servers. All right. So there's a pre-headline using the quote, a regular headline. And so here we're focusing, and this was just an idea, just again, before I press record, two new ingredients. So there's two main hero ingredients in the, the sunscreen, as I've denoted, um, in the VSL copy. Uh, so the other ingredients, however, are also amazing and so when I'm unfolding this, you know, I can talk about all the ingredients in this. I can go into the new cause, into the mechanism of the two hero ingredients and do a skim or a slight deep dive into the other ingredients and then get them onto the econ page. Or I can get them in the mood to look at the deep dive in the ingredients. And that would, of course, mean some variation to the econ page. You don't want to be too uh, repetitive and you know, they're going to see too many of the same things, even if it's written very differently. You don't need to do that. Less is more when you've done the pre-qualification that you need on the advertorial side. <clears throat> we can also say something like we can be transparent because we're sending people to the product. inclusive
So that would be more of a midpoint sophistication. I'm meeting people at the midpoint. So some early adopters, some late adopters, most people are thinking just about drugstore sunscreens. That would be the broad overarching audience that these are just people who might use some natural sunscreens, you know, so higher sophistication. Um, but none of them have the ingredients that are in this. So there is nothing to really compare, which allows us to hit both market sophistication easily. Market sophistication tones easily. And these can be many different things. These are broad. So I did that on purpose because I'm trying to instead, the more specific we get with mechanism about it, like a specific ingredient, the higher market sophistication. Um, well, I take that back. Let's just say. I could just as easily say something like that. Are they testable? Both are about the same sophistication level. Because if I get into a higher sophistication level, This can work in a higher sophistication. It could also maybe work at a lower sophistication. All right. Let's stay branded. So this is Dr. Carly speaking. give a little context here. mm 
though now we're getting into her why, the reason this became something that was top of mind. So again, the identification factor and right here would be a, a great spot to have that kind of displayed. So I'm gonna get going here, but you can see very quickly how I'm positioning the beginning of this advertorial to meet market sophistication at kind of two different places and draw them into this doctor's story but do it in a way that is going to be that breaking news feel without going over the top. I can hit a much harder breaking news like So something uh, more going for the throat. So I can do that. That's not the tone I want to use. It might be, if other things don't work, to go a little bit more aggressive. But because what's in this particular product is so amazing, I don't need to go over the top. I don't need to use old tropes in a way that can actually turn a lot of people off. It's a matter of connecting with where they're at, the story they're telling, at a part that is relevant to them so i can get their attention and help them understand the contrast of why this is so much different and better more effective so that is where i am going to end today's avatorial webinar let me turn this back if you do have any questions you can post them uh right here in the chat and please like and subscribe and i will see you later in part two and we're gonna get covering some deeper stuff sorry i got a little tired we're gonna cover some deeper stuff and get into the sales tutorial all right everybody